Hi guys, welcome to another class. Last class we started talking about the classification of living things. Now today we'll be talking about the virus. So we want to talk about which category, which group exactly does the virus fit in? Is the virus a living thing? Is it a non-living thing? And what kingdom does it fall under? So that's what we'll be talking about today. Now the virus, under the classification of living things, it cannot specifically fit into any of the five kingdoms because of some specific features that it has now the virus let's talk about what or the, what a virus is a virus is a microscopic organism that cannot be seen by an ordinary microscope but it can be seen by an electronic microscope so a virus is so tiny that it cannot be seen even by an ordinary microscope you have to make use of an electronic microscope so let's talk about some other things that we notice in a virus. A virus does not have a cell structure. Like other living organisms that have cell structures, a virus doesn't. So that is one speci special thing about a virus. A virus does not have a cell structure. But what, it, what makes up a virus is that it is made up of a coiled strand of nucleic acid. So a virus is just made up of coiled strands. Of nucleic acid found floating in the structure of the virus so the nucleic acid could either be ribonucleic acid which is rna and dioxy ribonucleic acid which is dna and so this nucleic acid is enclosed within a protein coat so that is what makes up a virus coiled strand of nucleic acid enclosed within a protein coat now a virus can be seen as the borderline between living things and non-living things because it is not necessarily a living thing and it's also not necessarily a non-living thing let me explain what i mean by this when a virus is outside living cells when it's in a non-living condition it forms a crystal and that crystal makes it become a non-living thing but when a virus is inside a living organism or a living cell what happens is that it replicates and produces and thus it becomes a living organism so because of this specific special feature of the virus virus is called an obligate intracellular parasite which means in a living cell it is a parasite it is a living organism while outside a living organism outside a living condition it is a non-living thing or a non-living organism now let's discuss the characteristics of a virus what are the things that we notice in a virus that makes us know that this organism is a virus as we've mentioned the virus is microscopic we also mentioned that it possesses either rna or dna so another characteristic is that it cannot reproduce by binary fission binary fission is a type of is a type of reproduction is a type of asexual reproduction so virus cannot reproduce by this means of reproduction now another characteristic is that it doesn't have structures that are used in the synthesis of protein so a virus does not possess those structures that we use or that other living organisms use in the synthesis of protein so it doesn't possess those structures so another characteristic of the virus is that it does not respire it does not excrete like other living organisms then another one is that it is responsible for the causes of several chronic diseases we have several examples like the current pandemic going on which is caused by the corona virus so we have several other diseases caused by viruses we have AIDS we have smallpox influenza measles and the list goes on and on so we said a virus can be classified as a living thing it could also be classified as a non-living thing so let's talk about the characteristics that makes a virus to be classified as a living thing or an animate thing so a virus as a living thing can it can be classified as a living thing because of these following reasons one is that virus can reproduce when present in another living cell so when a virus is found in another living condition or in a living cell it can reproduce and that and reproduction as we've discussed in one of our previous videos is a characteristic of living things so a virus can reproduce 
Hence, it's a living thing. Also, a virus possesses characteristics that can be transmitted from one generation to another. That is under genetics. So, just like human beings transmit characteristics from one from themselves to their offspring. For example, a tall parent can give birth to a tall child. So that is transmission of characteristics. So a virus also possesses that kind of characteristic. A virus can transmit characteristics from one generation to the next. Now, let's talk about the characteristics of virus as a non-living thing or an inanimate thing. So what are the things that we see in a virus that makes us say it cannot be classified as a non as a living thing one is that when a virus is extracted from a living cell and placed in a non-living medium or condition it assumes a crystalline form what that means is that it forms a crystal and it becomes a non-living thing so that is number one characteristic of the virus that makes it a non-living thing another one is that it cannot respire a virus cannot respire it cannot excrete it cannot respond to stimuli. These are characteristics of living things that we've discussed in our previous videos, respiration, excretion, and irritability. But a virus cannot exhibit these characteristics. Hence, it cannot be classified as a living, as a living organism. With that, we've come to the end of today's lesson. Next lesson, we'll, take, we'll start talking about the kingdoms under the classification of living things, starting with the kingdom Monera. See you next class.